Hi, this is Dr. Zhang with another edition of Oral Pathology. Today, we're going to look at descriptors in oral pathology. It's extremely important to describe what you see in as thorough a manner as possible. Some of the descriptors that you will find on your very own clipboard in the dental hygiene clinic include the location of the lesion, the size, how many, or the number, the history of the lesion that you've obtained from the patient, and extremely important is the appearance of the lesion. Let's talk about each in a little more detail. The location must be exact. It has to be as specific as you can possibly get it. You can't just write lesion on lip. That doesn't tell me where it is. Think of yourself as someone who's never seen the lesion and is seeing the patient as a referral for the first time. You have to be able to find the lesion based on the description that you're writing. So when I say it must be exact, first tell me is the lesion extraoral or intraoral? What type of mucosa is it on? Is it on the attached gingiva, on the palate, on the alveolar mucosa, on the buccal mucosa or labial mucosa? Be very specific. Is the lesion on the right or the left? Telling us the quadrant area is extremely helpful because that tells us right away whether it's right or left and whether it's maxillary or mandibular. If you recall, quadrants 1 and 2 are the maxillary, right and left, and quadrants 3 and 4 are the mandibular quadrants, left and right. If a lesion is found on the lip, is it near the vermilion border? And what teeth is it adjacent to? And that goes for lesions that are found on the buccal mucosa as well as the gingival mucosa. You must be very specific as to what teeth are nearby and also measure how far away they are. Especially if a lesion is on the gingival mucosa. Measure how far that lesion is from the gingival margin. Measuring the lesion itself is also extremely important. I can't emphasize this enough. You have the ideal tool to measure the size of the majority of intraoral lesions. We call it your periodontal probe. This is the type of probe that you have in our clinic, and many clinics also have a neighbor's probe that looks like that. Each of these items has a form of millimeter measurements on it. Use this measurement device to help you measure well, what the size of the lesion is. Another important factor is how many lesions are there. While many lesions are a single lesion, there are several types of conditions in oral pathology that will have numerous lesions. And we need to know how many and where are they, and also a good estimation of their size. When we talk about the history of the lesion, this is where it's incredibly important to talk to your patient. Ask your patient several questions. Have you ever noticed this before? Many patients will tell you they didn't know they had the lesion. On the other hand, there are numerous times when a patient will tell you, oh, I've had that since I was a small child, or this just started last month. It's a very important part of your diagnostic criteria to take into account. Ask the patient when they first noticed it. Sometimes a patient may not respond very well to how long has it been there, but they can tell you when they first noticed it. Phrasing a question in a different way is a good way to increase your knowledge of the lesion. Does the lesion hurt? This is also a very important factor. When does the lesion hurt? These are very helpful parameters to know. Many squamous cell carcinoma lesions, for example, do not hurt, and so that's a significant factor when we diagnose those types of lesions. When we look at the appearance, you'll notice that there are quite a few descriptions, or what we call descriptors, on your clipboard. 
we're going to look at several fields. We're going to look at the color of the lesion. Is it the same as the surrounding tissue? Is it different? Is it more red? Is it white? Is it brown, blue, or black? All of those help you narrow down what kind of lesion you may be dealing with. Using your gloved hands, it's important that you look at the texture or surface of the lesion and the consistency. Palpate the lesion and see, does it feel like a balloon filled with water, what we might call fluctuant, or is it very firm, like an irritation fibroma? What kind of border or outline does the lesion have? This refers to the shape or configuration of the lesion. And what is the depth of an ulcerated lesion or height of a raised lesion, which we call exophytic? The diagnostic process appearance description has several terms to describe some of these issues that we just discussed. When we look at the configuration or shape of a lesion, we'll often use the terms macular for a flat lesion, like a freckle, nodular or raised like a mole or ulcerated like an aphthous ulcer a lesion that goes down into the tissue the surface of the lesion is it smooth or is it somewhat pebbly appearing papillary with little pieces sticking out like little fingers or is it corrugated like an aluminum tin roof that's corrugated to go in an up and down motion. Is the lesion margins very distinct? If the margins are distinct, then it tells you a little bit about what type of lesion it might be. Some lesions are ill-defined and we have a difficult time finding the margins. That is also significant. And lastly, is the lesion mobile? When you palpate it with both gloved hands, is it very fixed in place, like to the attached gingiva, or is it a lesion that you can move around as you palpate the tissue? The mode of attachment is also important. Some lesions have a very broad base where they attach to the tissue. We call that sessile. Lesions with a narrow stalk, like a mushroom, are called pedunculated. Again, look at the consistency. Is the tissue soft or firm? Or is it a solitary lesion or multiple lesion? Do you have bilateral symmetry or not? Some conditions actually have a bilateral condition. For example, leukoedema is a grayish white opalescent film that is on the buccal mucosa, both right and left, in many African American patients. Is there the presence of pain? Is the lesion symptomatic or asymptomatic? And if so, how long has it been that way? Some lesions, for example, an abscess tooth or a parulus, are extremely painful until the pus or purulent exudate drains, at which point the lesion becomes asymptomatic. Now let's take a look at several lesions. We're going to practice with this particular lesion here. If you look at this lesion that I have circled here, you'll note that I have the measurement already in place for you since we don't have our probes intraorally right at the moment. This is a five millimeter in diameter lesion. Notice that I measured the diameter as close to the center of the lesion as I could. That helps us determine the size of the lesion. This lesion has very regular markings all around the edge, so it's a well-defined, very regular lesion with a red, slightly raised border, and it has a grayish-white center that is ulcerated, or dips down less than a millimeter. As you can see, this is an aphthous ulcer. Many of you may be familiar with abscess ulcers aphthous ulcers. These ulcers often occur intraorally and I'm betting that you'll see many of them before you finish your dental hygiene program. So look at this lesion in practice. 
think of all the appearance parameters that we talked about and write down what you think would be a good description for this particular lesion. Did you make a list? Remember to use the information in this slideshow that accompanies this video on Sakai in order to complete your list. Look at the configuration or the shape of the lesion. This lesion I would describe as an oval lesion with a very smooth well-defined margin that tells you the configuration of the margin. It can be distinct or ill-defined. So this is a very distinct margin with well-defined borders. This lesion is not very movable. I can't move the lesion separately from the tissue around it like you can do with many lymph nodes. So this is what I would consider a lesion that is not movable. This lesion is an ulcerated lesion. It doesn't have pebbly or corrugated surface to it, however. It has a very smooth surface. It has no discernible mode of attachment. It's an ulcerated lesion that goes into the tissue, has a smooth consistency. We only have one lesion in this picture, and it, therefore it's not bilateral. And this is a painful lesion. Let's look at this lesion. This is a different lesion that a student came up with during uh, our class one time, although this picture itself is from Wikipedia, so it's not a picture of our student. However, she had a very similar lesion to this. It was slightly uncomfortable for her, so she asked me to take a look at it in clinic. As you can see, again, I've marked the diameter for you. So notice that the lesion is 15 millimeters in diameter. Now your probe has 10 millimeters marked on it. However, the probe itself is longer, and so you can estimate the additional amount, or you can use an additional sterile probe to complete your measurement accurately. So we have a 15 millimeter lesion. It has a, it's neither macular or nodular or ulcerated. In this case, it's an exophytic lesion, which means it sticks up from the tissue borders. It's also a very smooth surface lesion. And at times, it increases in size and decreases in size, so often having a bluish gray tinge to it. It's a very fluctuant lesion. And so when I palpate this lesion with two hands that are gloved, you're going to find that it feels very squishy like a water balloon. It's slightly movable in the tissue, and again, it has a very fluctuant consistency. In this particular case, we only have one lesion, so it is not bilateral, and it's uncomfortable for the student right before she eats and during the meal. After that, it seems to decrease in size somewhat and is less painful at that time. So again, I'd like you to go through the list of words from your clipboard and this presentation to determine how which words you would use to describe this and put together a description that fits. Here's an example of a corrugated lesion. We see these types of lesions frequently in clinic, although again, this image is from Wikipedia Commons. You can see that the tissue has a very white appearance in the vestibule, which is uncommon. That is not normally what we see. It's a very irregular configuration. It's not macular, nodular, or ulcerated, but it is what we would call corrugated. And you can see how it's like little ledges that bump up and down, like an aluminum corrugated roof. The margins are very ill-defined. It's difficult to find exactly where some of these margins are. They're very irregular in shape. They're not even and smooth, as we saw with the previous two lesions. This lesion is not movable. It's very consistent with the tissue. It's not uh, what we would call unilateral, although it, we would call this a single lesion, it is bilateral because it crosses the midline. And this lesion is generally not a painful lesion for patients at this point in time. 
This is what we call smoker's keratosis, 